And we flinched the Rotom too. And the Thunder Wave. Awesome. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Boost to the Top of VGC 2021. You might notice a slight increase in quality today because as it turns out, my capture card isn't as bad as I thought, it actually works just fine. I just had very awful OBS settings. So I've increased the uh, sample size and I adjusted some audio things so maybe now the game audio won't downtune, but that's besides the point, let me know if you know a different, if you notice a difference or not. Uh, but. Yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. We'll be continuing this episode with my Players' Cup team, Burnt Out, and the code for this team will release on Friday. Stop asking. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you've asked, it's it's understandable that you might miss it. But yeah, if you enjoy the same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and yeah, just do all that, because <laughs> I'll be bringing you guys some daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content. And answer the comment, the comment question of the day, which is... What do you think is the best water type in the format right now, besides Tapu Fini? Because it seems like it's all Tapu Fini, and I want to know what you guys think. And excuse me if I, if I sound sick, I'm quite congested right now, uh, and I am very tired, so <laughs> I'll do my best not to sniffle, uh, so you guys don't have to deal with that in your ears this whole video. So yeah, let's see. Uh, Metagross, Grimmsnarl, Landorus, Tapu Fini, Rotom Heat, Tapu Bulu, I, or not Tapu Bulu, Rillaboom, Tapu Boomlu. Uh, I think this is a Players' Cup team that I saw. It definitely... Oh, there I go again. Uh, it definitely doesn't like the the screens up on my side of the field, so I'll go ahead and I'll start off with that. I could see some issues facing the uh, Rotom Heat, but with Moltres on the lead and Marowak in the back, I think I should be able to deal with that pretty effectively, considering Marowak is immune to both of its stabs. Or not immune to both of its stabs, but immune to the electric and resist the uh, fire. So that doesn't seem too bad, and I think my last Pokemon is going to be Kartana, uh, simply because Kartana has a good matchup versus Tapu Fini, as well as Rillaboom, and to an extent Grimmsnarl and um, Landorus. The reason it's only to an extent with Grimmsnarl is because Grimmsnarl's screens are a little bit annoying, a Thunder Wave could be very, very devastating, so yeah. <laughs> and you could definitely hear that one. I tried to, like, sniffle away from the camera. I'm sorry, I'm recording sick. Uh, it's, it's, it's just that time of year where I get sick. And I was also just excited to see how the video looked with the new quality, you know? As we lead off with Grimmsnarl and Landris, I actually really like that lead, uh, because I should be able to get up my Reflect and just Nasty Plot pretty much for free. I don't really see a play they can make here that is all that devastating. They'll likely want to go for screens. They could Thunder Wave me, but... Um, oh no, they can't, because I'm actually immune, because I'm Dark-type. You see, it's been a generation and a half, pretty much, and I still keep forgetting that mechanic. Okay, so we'll get a Reflect up. And we'll go for this Nasty Plot, and the reason I'm Nasty Plotting is in case they want to go for a Spirit Break, it allows me to, uh, just ignore that pretty much entirely, as well as getting my Weakness Policy and Berserk Boost. You know, if they knock me below 50%, which, behind screens, they may not. I think it's pretty obvious they'll want to go for the uh, the light screen here, if anything. Fake out might not be their play. And I don't think they would fake out into the Moltres, because the Dynamax option is really strong here. There's the light screen, no fake out from their side, which means I will be able to get my Reflect off and make this a lot safer. I think a Rock Slide would be ideal here, because then I am just absolutely set to start sweeping. <laughs> Get my Nasty Plot off, which means that this is likely a slower uh, Landorus, likely carrying the Assault Vest as well. As they Swords Dance, never mind. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to start destroying that thing. I don't want that thing on my field. <laughs> so yeah, uh, did I bring anything that can help me with that? I didn't bring my Landorus, so I don't have an Intimidator here. I think I'm fine with Tapu Koko staying on the field. I'll go ahead and go for my Max Airstream into the Landorus. Or actually, yeah, I should always Max Airstream here. And the reason I want to max Airstream initially is 100% because I don't want to get outpaced by this Landorus after it goes for its max Airstream. I could max Darkness into max Airstream to guarantee the KO, but that seems a bit risky now. So no Assault Vest on the Landorus is actually really good news, which means it won't be taking this hit very well.
And I should be able to take a max rock fall pretty well behind screens. If anything, they would just go for the max quake, which isn't too bad. Because I can just bring in Kartana the next turn to uh, pick up a KO. Alright, we Dynamax up. As they have to Dynamax as well, makes sense. I was curious to see if they would try to burn out, burn a turn with uh, Reflector, or not Reflector, with Protect or something. Alright. Let's see how much this does. I'm going to say it's going to do a little under 50%. Dazzling Gleam for some chip. Max Airstream. Yeah, so... I'm hoping they just go for their own Max Airstream here. If they go for a Max Rockfall, that's actually probably better because I get my weakness policy. They Max Rockfall. I should be able to eat that up. Granted, they don't crit me or anything. Epic, dude. That's just, that's just epic. I get my weakness policy. I get my Berserk. Everything's just going hunky-dory, you know? Just hunky dory. Get my berserk. As they spirit break as well, I'll be able to survive that just barely. Max Airstream is likely my best option to KO them this next turn. But I want to play it a bit safe. I think they might max guard and go for a spirit break. So what I'll do here is I'll actually get in my Kartana. And I will max guard. And all that matters really is KOing this Landris. And then they're pretty much open to get swept by my Kartana. Because it would make sense for them to max guard here. Since they do have sword stance, they can use that to max guard and then go for the spirit break. Uh, to ensure they knock me out. Alright, we withdraw. Hopefully they go for the max guard and I, I make the, the right read. Or maybe they'll just double into the into the uh, Moltres as well. That wouldn't be as bad. As they max Quake. Unfortunately, I do not make the right read. I could have gotten a KO there. I mean, Kartana isn't in the worst spot. But it's also not in like an ideal spot. There's their Spirit Break. Moltres takes some Sandstorm damage, and they could still go for the Max Guard here, but I think they might just Max Airstream now. What I'll do is I will go for my Smart Strike into the Grim Snarl for the KO. And I believe we can KO the Landorus. He's at plus one special defense behind screens. I'm at plus four special attack. I think we'll, we'll be fine to KO here. So I'll go for my Max Airstream. Let's see if they have Thunder Wave as well. I'm hoping that their last move is actually just Fake Out. As they max Guard. They go for the Reflect, that's fine. I can actually go ahead and just click uh, Fiery Wrath now. And probably still pick up a KO. Yep, they survived. That was actually ideal. <laughs> just barely hang on there because uh, now what I can do is actually just go for the Leaf Blade and Fiery Wrath and target both of those into the Landorus and that should always KO. In fact, it'd be ideal if the Fiery Wrath just barely misses out on the KO. Because <laughs> Kartana now has a speed boost. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. Does it? Yeah, it does not. Or maybe it does. No, it doesn't, because I because <laughs> I went for the max guard the second turn. It's fine, though. I think we have enough speed on Kartana where it doesn't really matter. They would have to have Thunder Wave here, right? If they wanted to stop Kartana from doing anything. Fiery Wrath. 
pick up a possibly a double KO. No, it just barely misses out in the lander, which is what I wanted, because uh, now Cartana will get plus one. Ooh, actually, that's not great. Tell me we still KO. Cartana, you can crit, right? <laughs> hey, thank you, bud. I appreciate you. I mean, it has an increased chance to crit compared to other moves, but I still definitely did not deserve that. <laughs> Moltres will go down here due to sand, uh, while Cartana is still in a prime position to do some major damage to their side of the field. And what I'll actually do here is... I'm more concerned with Tapu Fini. So I'll lead off Marowak here. And what I could try to do is bring in Tapu Koko in the endgame to beat Tapu Fini, which is what I assume they have in the back. Ooh, the fake out is going to be annoying. Oh, they have a Rotom. Okay. That's actually like the best case scenario, because they have to fake out here if they want to win. And I just beat their Rotom 1v1. I'll go ahead and I'll let them fake out the Kartana. And I will try to Sacred Sword this Rotom right here as I Flare Blitz into their Rillaboom. They could Grassy Glide as well, but, you know, not worth the risk switching in Tapu Koko and stuff, you know. <laughs> if they Protect as well, I get a plus one Sacred Sword off, which is even more devastating in my opinion. Rotom would have to have Dark Pulse, but usually they carry Protect, Thunderbolt, Overheat and stuff, so I think we're fine. There's the KO on my Kartana. Critical hit probably didn't matter. <laughs> Grassy Glide is a very strong move in terrain, and I have very low HP. There's their Nasty Plot. And like I said, I am immune to their electric moves. So I get my Flare Blitz off. And I can actually set up a light screen for myself. I actually can't remember if I already have it up. Because <laughs> I'm really dumb. Sandstorm's gone, which is actually pretty nice for me. I get some recovery while they get denied it. Switch in the Coco. And what I want to do here is actually protect my Marowak. And force them to overheat. Into the Marowak. Because <laughs> what, what I want to do is get as much recovery as I can. Because they can't just go for a Thunderbolt or anything. They have to overheat if they want to do any damage. Yeah, I don't have my light screen up, so right now is a good turn to go for the light screen. And protect. If they overheat in the Marowak, this is a really nice turn for me. If they end up going for the uh, overheat into the Coco, I at least bring them de uh, down to neutral where I, can, where I can knock them out with two Shadow Bones. Get my light screen off. As they nasty plot again, they are they are brazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. Um, I think I can take the overheat. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. I hope so. <laughs> I need this Marowak to take the overheat. This is actually really scary. They made a really good play right there. Because I'm doing no damage. There's the overheat. Come on, Marowak. You got this. He does not have it. He does not. <laughs> Dang, man. I threw that. I, I probably should have just Shadow Boned. Yeah, I definitely should have just Shadow Boned, man. Go for the Thunderbolt. Uh, I have to, like, crit him a million times and he has to miss every hit. And he likely has a berry, so, you know, it's probably just game. It's probably just game. As they go back up to plus four, I definitely don't take that if they land it. I need to crit twice. Come on, baby. One. Oh, that's one. 
And there's the berry. Okay, good game. Good game, man. Good game. I think what he's doing is he's nasty plotting so he can Thunderbolt. Because Thunderbolt would be a lot safer than risking a miss with that move. But I suppose you can just land it once and win. So yeah, good game to him. <laughs> I was dumb. I should have just Shadow Boned and I could have secured the win there. I think I would have taken it anyways uh, behind light screen and stuff. Because it would have just been neutral. So my bad. Let me go ahead and grab my charger for my controller so it doesn't die. Okay, okay. So what we're going to try to do in this next game is not throw right at the end. I, I'm the king of throws, if you're not aware. I have thrown every game that I could have possibly thrown. <laughs> if it's like completely out of my control to throw the game, like if there's just no way I can lose, then I will win. If there's a chance for me to lose, I will, I will take that opportunity. All right. So we're going to face Big Tuna, who's running an interesting team, Double Horse. Double Horse right there. Um, dang, Urshifu is a little bit annoying, but Marowak is really nice on the lead here. I think what I'll do is I'll go Marowak and... Hmm. Actually, I think Marowak Moltres just completely denies him any kind of Trick Room. Because this Trick Room matchup is pretty good versus me. We'll go Marowak Moltres. Um, in the back, I want Tapu Fini. I don't know if I want screens on this game. I think I might just go with Tapu Coco here. Or er, Kartana, I mean. Yeah, I think Kartana is probably better than screens. <laughs> All right. As they lead off Dusclop Spectrier, which is actually a phenomenal lead for me. Because, I mean, I can live the hit from Spectrier as long as it's not Choice Specs right here. By Dynamaxing? Do I Dynamax? I kind of want to Dynamax to remove Dusclops from the field because I'm not as scared as Spectrier. And I only need one Fiery Wrath flinch, I think. I'm hoping Mera can take this hit. He has to take the hit. Unless I have a better option. I, I really don't. We'll go for it. That was probably a really dumb play. I could have just protected Marowak and taken out Spectre or so under Trick Room, Marowak could beat the, uh, the Glacier like he's supposed to. But denying the Trick Room altogether would be better. Hopefully it's like Focus Sash and not Life Orb. Or Specs. <laughs> Any non-damage boosting item is fine. Yeah, we're good. Get my Fiery Wrath off. Get some damage on both of these boys. And the Max Phantasm into Dust Cop should do it. Nice. So no Trick Room for them. Uh, on top of that, I can just max guard my Marowak here and go for another one of these attacks into their Spectrier with my Moltres. <laughs> and he honestly didn't take as much as I thought he would. I thought I would just barely survive that. There's their Glacier. Yeah, I mean, I can beat this pretty handily by going for max guard here, going for another fiery wrath, getting some chip damage, and then on the following turn, if they decide to go for the the hail move to knock out my uh, to knock out my Moltres, I can just bring in Kartana, and I'll be fine. It's likely the Dynamax Glacier. Yep, there it is. And if they go for a max quake, that's actually best case scenario, but I really doubt they do that. They can just knock out the Marowak with the Shadow Ball. Get my Max Guard off. The Shadow Ball into the Max Guard, getting nothing. They're likely going to KO my Moltres, but it's a trade I'm willing to make. 
critical hit on the Glacier. All right. Yeah, they're definitely within range of Kartana plus Moltres now. Or Kartana plus Marek. As they Hailstorm for the KO. They would have to have speed investment on this Glacier to actually, you know, not get undersped by me. Chilling Nay goes off. That's fine. And I always just bring in Kartana to double into this Glacier. So they send in the Rillaboom. Um, that's fine, I think. Hmm. Maybe I actually just... Maybe I go Finny here. Because I always have to max Flare. Like, that's just a fact. If they fake out the Kartana, I'm not in a very good spot. And I think I'd rather have Kartana to beat the uh, the Rillaboom in the endgame. So I'll actually double out the Kartana here. I'll get rid of their Grassy Terrain as well. If they have high horsepower, I don't believe I get knocked out from this range. Since I do have a lot of defense investment. Alright, I remove their terrain. Likely sacking a Finny here to an attack. I think they have to fake out into the Finny. Yep, there it is. Make the right call. Get my max flare off. Let's see if this KOs. Alright, nice. As they are weakness policy. Now, if this goes into the Finny, I'm fine with that because I can always KO this thing next turn with the Kartana. Alright, they knock out the Marowak, that's fine. Uh, so I just bring in my Kartana, and I protect my Finny and go for a Smart Strike into them. And that'll KO. And then on the subsequent turns, I can win with Aerial Ace into the Rillaboom, and it shouldn't be too bad. Let's see if they're running Protect. It would make sense for them to have Protect on this thing, but some people forego it, even though it's just such a good move on this thing when you're running Trick Room. Alright, go for my Smart Strike to KO, go for my Protect. If they have Super Power on the Rillaboom, I'm going to be terrified. Protect the Finny. Yep, they Max Guard. It wasn't worth reading that. 100% not worth reading. So they would hammer into the Finny. All good. I can just get the KO next turn. Let me go for my Smart Strike into the Glacier. And I'll just go for Muddy Water since Finny's going down anyways. He fails his double protect. I was tempted to go for a double protect myself just to try to nae nae on that option. Get our KO. And now he's within range of getting two shot, I think, by Aerial Ace. Beast boost. I go for my Muddy Water. And the reason I'm doing that is because Moonblast wouldn't have done much anyways. Like, yeah, Moonblast is technically better, but... You know, accuracy drops, why not? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and he is going to take a lot of recoil here, so he's probably just in range of Aerial Ace now. Yeah, plus one Aerial Ace, I'm going to say that's that's going to do it there. Go ahead and click that funny move. And we are at full health. I don't think he actually has the moves he needs to beat me. The Protect is absolutely useless there. He doesn't gain anything from that. Go for the Aerial Ace again. I'm going to say plus one Aerial Ace does it from this range. I don't have any attack investment on this Kartana, but I think we're fine.
Ooh, not quite. But as long as I survive this turn, which I'm gonna, because, you know, wood hammer. Oh, no. <laughs> he doesn't quite knock himself out there. I mean, what's a funny move we can click here? Could just leaf blade, I guess. Yeah, it's just leaf blade. It doesn't matter. If he protects, I swear. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, if he protects, he's just being mean at that point. He's like, I'm gonna lose, but I'm gonna waste 20 minutes of your time. Not 20 minutes, but rather like 20 seconds. Alright, let's get one more battle for today. Make up for that throw at the beginning of the match, or at the beginning of the games. Whew. And, I mean, I'm going to do one more session with this team on Friday, probably. Or maybe I'll make a new team. I, I have an Altaria team in the works that, uh, it just seems so heat that I can't help but try to use it. Okay, um, Dragapult Clefairy is actually really, really annoying for this team. I'll leave Tabu Coco just because the screens are so nice. Um, if it's special Dragapult, Kartana is not good on the lead, but I think regardless, like, Moltres is just phenomenal on the lead. In the back here, uh, I can bring the Marowak. And I think my last Pokemon is going to have to be... It's between Landorus and Kartana. I think I prefer Landorus just because... Like, Kartana's weak to Moltres. It's it's weak to Special Dragapult. Landorus overall is just... You know, just like a really good option. As the lead off Clefairy Rotom, which is fine by me. Absolutely fine by me. Uh, what I'll do here is I'll just go for my Light Screen and Nasty Plot. And I, I don't really see how he can beat the Moltres on the lead. I don't even have to Dynamax it. Just Light Screen up, Nasty Plot up. If he gives me my Weakness Policy, that's just great. Because <laughs> he's probably just going to Nasty Plot himself, you know? I outspeed him with my Landorus. If he burns his Dynamax first, that's better for me. Follow me. We're probably just going to exchange Nasty Plots. In fact, I could just double out into my... <laughs> into my Marowak and beat him. Unless he has Discharge, which he really shouldn't, you know? Yeah, Rotom Heat's been picking up in usage because it's great versus Moltres, it's great versus Kartana, great versus Rillaboom, has a, a, like a fighting chance versus Finny if you get a nasty plot off. In fact, it threatens Finny more than Finny threatens it. So, yeah, there's there's just a lot going for it. We'll go ahead and switch out into Marowak there, and I'll go for a raw Fiery Wrath. So it can't get redirected. And if he Dynamaxes, he's just stuck. <laughs> That's the funny part, he's just stuck clicking uh, a single target move. Fiery Wrath. That's a clean two shot. Hopefully he just Thunderbolted here. Critical hit on the Rotom. And we flinch the Rotom too. And the Thunder Wave. Awesome. That's just great, bro. That's just great. Um, I mean, I can just click it again. In fact, what I might do is I might try to call him on his play to... Let me protect here. I might try to call him on his play to go for the... Um, the overheat in my Clefairy, or into my Moltres, since it does do a lot of damage. And I'll just go ahead and click the uh, Shadow Bone into him. As he Dynamaxes. Which is fine. Because we're still going to be doing a lot. And he's stuck, he's stuck clicking single target moves. So. We're good. Go for the Protect. Clefairy Protects. He goes for the Max Flare. That's not going to knock me out. Uh, and the Shadow Bone will put him in range of Fiery Wrath, which is great. I mean, actually probably not, because he's going to get his Berry. 
but it's still all good, you know? Um, do I mind losing the Moltres? I don't know if I mind losing the Moltres, really. Landorus Coco, how well do you handle what's in the back? Actually, Landorus just goes in on his entire rest of the team. And I, there's no way I lose both of my Pokemon here. So I'm kind of tempted just to Shadow Bone and Fiery Wrath once more. Actually, you know what? Nah, it's just Max Airstream. It doesn't matter. It's going to get redirected into the Clefairy, but he's going for a fire move in the sun. So it's it's not super effective, you know, it's at plus two still, so that is scary. But we're, we're behind a screen. He has very little offensive pressure here, now that I think about it. And as soon as his Rotom's gone, I think I just win the game. Especially if I get some speed boost going. There's the helping hand. Oh, he's trying. Get my max airstream. Now at plus two, that's not doing too much, but he's definitely within Shadow Bone range, and I don't think he knocks me out now. I was expecting it to get redirected, so I just targeted into uh, the Rotom in case it didn't. Sort of a middle ground play there. And yeah, that does a lot of damage, but now I just get Berserk. And I still have my speed boost. Shadow Bone goes off. It does enough to KO. Yeah, Marowak is such a cool little metagame call, because it's really good for beating the Rotom Heat as long as you don't throw the way I did the first game. Because I could have just won by clicking Shadow Bone and uh, Light Screen and then going for Dazzling Gleam and stuff, you know? And since I am at plus three, it's it's sort of ideal that I let my Dynamax wear off here. Or actually, you know what I can do? Let me get in my Landers to Intimidate. I'm living this hit. And I'll go for my Max Airstream into the Landers. If he doesn't follow me, I'm still fine. Is he helping hands? Yeah, that's a dead Lando. This is plus three, man. Oh, he's Scarf. Okay. I mean, that's still not terrible. He just revealed Choice Scarf. So I can get my Reflect off. And my Lando beats him 1v1. Get him my Coco. Whew. Okay. So Choice Scarf was a little bit annoying there. I think what I play here is to um, get my Reflect off and fly into the Clefairy. Yep, he withdraws. He might read that as a fly into the Lando slot. Nice. And he's likely weakness policy on the Moltres, so I might just leave that alone for a bit. Or maybe no, maybe I don't do that. Because that will give him an opportunity to Nasty Plot. I think I just Thunderbolt, because if he, even if he goes for the Thunderbolt here, um, or even if he does go for the Follow Me here, the Clefairy will go down. Scarf is very scary in the endgame, though, but I did get my Reflect off, so I'm probably okay. Especially if I cycle some Intimidates. Here's the Nasty Plot. And I'm definitely faster than his, uh... This Moltres. And I have no damage on my Coco. So what I'll do here is I'll just Rock Slide and go for Thunderbolt, and I think that'll do enough to KO, especially with my Life Orb. Because he has to Earthquake. 
As long as I connect here, I win. He 100% has to go for the, uh... He has to go for the Earthquake. If he rock slides, that's that's a little bit more risky for him. Hopefully I don't just give him weakness policy here. <laughs> And if this uh, Moltres goes down, he's forced to forfeit. Alright. Rock Slide Flinch, maybe? <laughs> I only need one. Oh, he's got a berry, so no weakness policy. Oh, no. Okay. One flinch. We need one. There's the Berserk. This is scary. This is scary because he can reverse sweep me. Come on, Lando. You got this. Ah, that's game. Yeah, that's game. Yeah, they played it well. Uh, getting out their Lando was really smart. Moltres in the end was their win condition. Scarf Lando caught me off guard there. You don't see it too often anymore, but that's on me for not being able to uh, identify a threat. I think had I survived that rock slide, I would have won there, but it's all good. Let's go ahead and uh, forfeit this match, because I'm going to get KO'd anyways. Alright, but yeah, uh, that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys want to do me a favor, leave a like in the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, because once again, daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. If you want to support me in another way, you can continue to watch the channel uh, by clicking any one of the recommended videos that will pop up in the end screen. But with that, I'm going to call it. Have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.